Sarah Blake Morgan is live right now. And Sarah Blake, I understand you're you're safe at this point, and police have you protected. Yeah, they absolutely do. We're safe where we are. We're actually hiding behind a vehicle, but I'm going to have my photographer pan over here. You can see officers are standing by. Some of them have their guns drawn. Probably about just a minute after we cleared our first live shot that you all saw, we heard consecutive gunshots over and over again, and that's when everybody went running. The nine days of mourning continue here in Cuba for Fidel Castro. You can hear and see right just about a few hundred feet from me, uh, police lined up and right here. They are doing what they can to get these protesters out of uptown. A campaign that has struggled with enthusiasm, certainly had it here tonight. Just to show you the massive power of this system, I'm standing in this hole where a tree was completely uprooted. Let's walk over here because I think it's safe to say that there's no one enjoying the snow more than Charlie here. There are parts of Haiti right now where high winds leveled homes and floodwaters washed out roads completely. I'll tell you that it didn't take long for CMPD to step in and end this situation as hundreds of protesters Protesters had moved out onto I-277. Yeah, that's absolutely up. Oh, we've got officers who are running. Oh, this is this is someone that you can see um, is running to that. toward that initial scene. Let's, the the let's scene that, that you guys are please. seeing right now. The, the scene that you guys are seeing now is the scene where the homicide victim is. Uh, I'm going to actually get get my photographer to come back on me because this is a very private moment and I want to respect a victim and their family. Last month, I stood in this intersection, my eyes burning from the tear gas as insults and other things were hurled at our crews. Some chose chaos, but others pushed for peace. And out of the hundreds of people I met that week, there are two I will never forget, a protester and a policeman. Life in Uptown Charlotte moves as if it never happened. One has to look closely to even see the scars left behind. These are streets. Ain't nothing coming through these streets. But the echoes of that September week will forever play through the minds of these two men. My leg is shaking because it's just, when you think about everything, you really like, wow. Curtis Hayes is a 28-year-old oh, activist. Mike Campagna, a major with the Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Department who walked every step with protesters following the Keith Scott shooting. We did six nights, 60 miles is that. Really? Lost about five pounds, so. Wake up! Countless steps, many of them spent just like this. We ain't what you think we are, and we gonna make you see what we are. When they were talking to you, and you made a decision to talk back, they were like, what could they do? You de-escalated that whole situation right there in itself. One month later, we brought these two together to find out how Charlotte moves on. The same men seen right here. This is why it's unfortunate. This is why we'll never become a unified country because we always make excuses always on both the sides. Same. Two people who do not always see eye to eye. Tell me, please, Captain, answer your question. You yeah. got outraged at me a couple times. I did. Over his first few days. I did. So, I did. So yeah, I did. Hayes wants a greater focus put on de-escalating situations. If we gonna sit here and pull out our gun a thousand times out of a holster, make sure it's one swift movement, maybe we could focus a little bit more time on whether we really need to use deadly force. By and large, we do de-escalate situations. Can we do better? If we look at situation by situation, yes, I would never say that we are perfect. Campagna would like to see more communication between his officers and the community. I am okay with anger, and outrage and sadness and disgust and frustration, but I have a problem with fear. Like, I didn't get into this business, people will be afraid of me. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. It's hard to see it here, but in the midst of the emotion, these men shook hands, two very different people, hoping to heal their wounded city. We're all humans at the end of the day, whether we wear a badge, or whether we don't. In Charlotte, Sarah Blake Morgan, WBTV on your side. Corner. His face frames the city. Even in death, Fidel Castro's power hovers over the Cuban people. Flags fly low and wave from side street balconies only to honor him. One hangs outside Antoro Puza's house. Inside, he shows off a faded picture of a proud moment. Puza was just 24 when his picture was taken with Castro. This man is now 80. Uh, Fidel. Fidel was um, a, a man who always think about the future. Cuba is a time warp. The cars that sputtered down the crowded city streets showed the effects of an endless embargo. 
Hussa's daughter comes home from school as he insists the Cuban way of life is exactly the way he likes it. But he is happy he can now share his country with his American neighbors. So we say thank you to Obama because he tried to put together our people. And so we invite uh, Trump to do the same. An invitation offered to the U.S. But life will move on here in Cuba as they wait for acceptance. We are open the door in Havana. Sarah Blake Morgan, WBTV on your side. When stitching together a new skill, you see the numbers here. Concentration can be key. You listen from salvage to salvage. Then try it for yourself until the spool starts spinning. Yep, right like that. But the ones learning here today must pay close attention to the instructions spoken in a language that isn't their first. Everybody understand that? <laughs> in Burmese? No, what language was that? Burmese. Most of the people attending the Make Welcome Sewing School are refugees One, two, who have come to live in Charlotte from all corners of the globe. It's nice and straight. Mm -hmm. They've left family, they've left home, they've left community. A few years ago, Beth Pinkney co-founded Make Welcome, <laughs> simply because she stopped to imagine how isolating a new life would be in a foreign place. My family's close by. I have a home. I've never had to flee. Um, I've never lived in a place where there's war. The beginner class is learning the basics. Had you ever sewn before? Never. Never? Never, ever. But Make Welcome's advanced students craft beautiful pieces sold in an online Etsy shop. The money raised goes straight to them. Most of them had no way of earning any kind of supplemental income. This quiet group of refugees hasn't asked for the spotlight, but it's focused in on them in recent weeks. We had another woman in class the other day that asked me, why is America changing? I don't feel safe. And I, 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 it broke my heart. While they may all be cut from different cloths, these refugees hope only to one day be seamlessly stitched into the American dream. People nice, yeah. In Charlotte, Sarah Blake Morgan, WBTV on your side. A picture. Eyes right on me. Captures a single moment in time. Take a step forward for me. But the ones snapped here today offer a window into endless memories. How long did you stay in the service? Three years, two months, and seven days. Stacy Pearsall can make anyone feel comfortable staring down the barrel of her lens. Dance with me. Yes. <laughs> she spent nearly a decade traveling the country, <laughs> taking pictures of American heroes for the Veterans Portrait Project. What was your first car? What was my first car? A Chevrolet. One by one they pose, sharing vignettes of their past and swapping war stories without hesitation. One to Qatar, one to Kyrgyzstan, one to Iraq. You got a good scar? Yeah. These veterans opening up so quickly because they know Stacy is one of them. You were in the Air Force. Yes. And so was I. Yes. The decorated combat Air Force photographer can relate when her subjects talk about the cost of war. He never got to see his daughter. He got killed over her. 300 men on that hill. And uh, none of them made it. Pearsall was wounded in Iraq in 2007. So this piece of shrapnel, I have to know, Gary, was it a mortar round or? OK. This woman listens, and maybe that's her secret to getting the perfect shot. But shouldn't we all stop and do the same before these stories fade in a flash forever? How about that? In Charlotte. Yeah. Yeah. Sarah Blake Morgan, WBTV on your side.